at age seven. Just like many Ghanaian boys at his age, James Edufo had a dream of becoming the next Abbe de Pele. But on one evening in 1996, that dream turned into a nightmare as his life changed forever. My name is uh, James Edufo, popularly known as Coach Sympathy. I'm in Kumasi, Tafo to be precise. I'm a physically challenged person, but irrespective of my capability, I have decided to train and develop children who want to take football as a career. Grassless playing surfaces or Sakura parks, it is on pitches like these that dreams are forged. But it's also on pitches like these that some of these kids' dreams do end. But if you're James Hedufo, crippled at the age of serving and confined to a wheelchair, his dream of becoming a football coach ended even before it could begin. But he followed through that passion, becoming a football coach, and is now rolling out tactics on a wheelchair. James didn't always set out to be a football coach. I have a great passion for football, and I, I was a footballer back then. But I thought I can play football because I, I was very skillful. But because of unexpected um, accident that made me to become a crippled, I couldn't able to reach my dream. So I decided not to look down upon myself, always the talent in me. So like I will use my disability to do something better too help children who also want to take football as a career. As you would expect, it wasn't always easy. After completing senior high school in 2007, there was no money to continue his education. And with his own family constantly putting him down, James took a drastic decision to leave home. I was in Western region, Takwa Damai, a place called Kodiakulum. It's part of um, Takwa Damai. I was there with this vision and my family, especially my uncle, was not supporting the vision that I have because he said that he haven't seen somebody like me being a coach before. So they are giving me, this, they will always discourage me. So I decided, that I, I decided that this is what I want to do to help children who also want to, you know, take football as a career. So I decided to move from Western region to come and settle over here. In 2007, James set up a Colts team in the Tafo area in Kumase, training players from under 10 up to under 17 level. For the last 10 years, each evening after school, Coach Sympathy, as he's affectionately known, would gather his players on the grassless gravel playing surface at the Pentecostal Educational School Park. From modest beginnings, James now oversees the training of over 80 youth players. Right now, I have about 80 to 86 players now. Um, I have under 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, and 17 players. And then by the grace of God, two of them have got opportunity as well in Europe. Being a football coach is an animated job that requires a lot of physical activity. For sympathy, it's confined to a wheelchair, but that hasn't stopped him from participating physically in the training sessions. As I said, I always I give time to the Almighty God for the kind of knowledge and the wisdom um, that He has given me. I use my hands. Um, sometimes, the, my, most of my ch children, the players that I'm training, they get it one that that uh, somebody like me use my hands to give accurate passes and. Um, free kids and those kind of things. Uh, I give thanks to the Almighty God for helping me with my hand to do demonstration for the boys. Because these kids, if you don't demonstrate to them, they cannot do, um, learn what you expect them to do. It is this attitude of sacrifice that has endeared Coach Sympathy to the children he trains. He's a, a great person. He has good things to give us. Yeah, he's a very good uh, I love him. He's more than able. 
he give us a lot of things. He he always maybe preaches us to to be with God. So it's very different from other coaches. I love. Him. Actually, I've been playing with Coach Simpetu with about eight years or so. Yeah, you can say that since I was a kid. Um, under eight years, yeah, I've been playing. He's very good. He at times play with us, though he's in wheelchair, but he sometimes come on the pitch and play with his, uh, his hands. And he's, he's nice, he's very good. It's very different, because, uh, actually, he's different above all the coaches I have been, I have seen because. He try he try to teach us what it will help us in the coming future, and also try to teach us what is now going on in the football, what information is in right now, what information what uh, what information the football uh, players are following, the coaches are following, and what the mis, uh, the midfielders are playing to, and he make sure you get a, a role model so that you can. Come and tell him so that when you play, then he can t at times try to tell you that um, this is not how this player play. Maybe Iniesta, this is not how he play. He play like this. He make he make football just simple, simple football. He's very talented. If he don't, if he's not here, we don't feel comfortable. We like sympathy. All the coaches we like them all. But sympathy is the most we like. Who we like best? He he also. Support us with a lot of money. Maybe when we come to match, no food. You, you, you also buy food for us to eat. So we, we, we all need sponsorship. Our training baby is not enough. And boss, the pitches is very bad. If if, if somebody fell on it. He might have a big in, in, injury, so we need sponges, yeah. We need sponges, yeah. Balls, like balls, cones and babes and other things. If you get it, it will be much better. Training the young footballers was and has always been an unpaid job for James. It forced him to engage in all kinds of businesses to support his dream, including selling pirated movies and TV shows. So four years ago, I started with Petty Petty Business, whereby I was selling some um, Ghanaian movies and then um, of our foreign series so that I can get a little bit of money to support the thing that I'm doing. But because of nowadays, uh, the business has collapsed. I'm facing a lot of challenges. It's not easy, but the God who is seeing, seeing me through. James has been working as an amateur coach pretty much all of his adult life. He tells me some of the boys he's trained over the last 10 years have gone on to do greater things with their football careers. One of my younger brothers that uh, I train in with him is now playing. Um, last year he was in Portugal, and now by the grace of God he's in Spain playing for Division Two over there. And then also one of my players is in right to him. He even invited for the recently they just ended under 17 tournaments, but uh, the final squad he couldn't able to make into the squad. But I was happy that he was he never had been called. James has told me about his own dreams of nurturing young talent for some of Ghana's national teams. And in June of 2017, he took a massive step towards achieving that dream when he was named head coach of Ghana Division II side KSV First Light FC in Kaswa in the central region. How do you guys feel about that? Yeah! Uh, 2017, 12 June 2017, I had a phone call from one of the chairman, who is Nakla Kaneshi, First Lights. Um, he called me and said that uh, he has a second division team in, in Kasua, 
but always they struggle a lot to survive. And that time, 2017, they were they, they have finished playing the first round and they were at the last bottom of the league table, battle for relegation. So he decided to sack the coach and he called me that uh, he knows that I can do it because he has seen me in, in social media and other places and somebody has also testified about me. So he believes that uh, I can do the job for him. So I responded to his call and I went there. So when I, get, I got there, the situation was very bad, you know. They have already registered the players and that there was no opportunity for me to bring in any um, new players. But only thing that I need to concentrate is the old players that people saying they are not doing well. So when I, I the day that I was appointed, you know, the day that the chairman was introducing me to the players and the supporters, when the players saw me and the supporters saw me, they were, uh, they were doubting, they were disappointed. They told the chairman that uh, even the person who is able, who is upright, couldn't able to do anything. How much about me, somebody who is in a wheelchair? Because they haven't seen anyone being like me, um, like be a coach before. So like it was, um, what the question that it was coming out was uh, something that pathetic and then very doubting. But I told them that uh, they, they shouldn't look at my condition, but rather they have to consider what I can do for them. So by the grace of God, when we started the second round, of the league things totally change and then by the when the second we finished the second round we pre-stayed yeah when james was initially introduced to the squad they had reservations but soon they discovered that disability doesn't always equate inability some of them were having doubts yeah they were saying how can he even react when he comes on the pitch because they knew maybe he has the idea to be a coach, but you see, since he's, he's a disabled, we were expecting to at least be moving, arranging the cones, the markets, and showing us how to be react. So those who didn't know him were like, they were frustrated, but for me, I knew he can, yeah. Actually, I was so excited because even we get, those have both legs, it's difficult to do such work like this. So when I, the first time I meet him, I was happy and I was even proud of him because not everyone can get opportunity or boldly as a disabled to do such work. So you all appreciate his work and you're happy to work with him. And the previous coach we were having, he was good, he was very good, but the only problem we were having about from, from him was uh, a little pressure. He was giving us pressure. We didn't, he didn't allow us to express what we have. Yeah, it was like instructions. You got to do this, you got to do this. So. Even if you can't, you have to bring it out, yeah. But the difference he brought was like, he, he just introduced his formation he had for the club and asked, allow us to express everything we got, yeah, potential we got. If you think you can do it, do it, let me see. So that made us, we brought all out, yeah. But after my secondary school, I traveled here, I met coach, he to see, I, he see, he seen something in me, so I need to work hard. If I not work hard, I'm going to get the best out of what I need. So my dream is to become a professional footballer and not even professional football alone. Even in, after football, my career, I want to be a coach or at least build an academy to help those who are coming so that they can reach at that level. Aside on the pitch, he's an inspiration to me. He, gives, he inspires me a lot. Uh, it's very difficult to be a footballer in Ghana actually because if you if not have anyone to support you, it's very difficult. But he, he always tells me, what bring food on my table is the is the football I think I have, and if you know you can, you have to do it. You can. So he's like, he he inspires you. He he, he gives you advice. He even tells you, look at his, his situation, but he 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 can make it. How much more you? So he he always inspires. You. Aside teaching you the football, he inspires you. So even on the pitch, you get the motivation to do it. Yeah. James is very active on Facebook with over 1,700 friends on the social media networking site. On October of 2017, he put up a lengthy post and tagged the Facebook page of the president, Nana Akufuado. In the post, he detailed the work he did and asked people to support in providing football equipment for his kids. He urged others to share his post to their friends. No one shared the post. Just one comment and three likes. I feel much uh, disappointed uh, sometimes, but uh, as my motto or my slogan keep on, I you know motivating me. Never give up. Um, I will never give up. I was. Uh, I'm still doing what I'm doing in order to reach my goal. 
Though um, I, I used to post a lot on Facebook and uh, other social medias, but uh, as um, I have used to tag with so many decretes and other celebrities, but yes, so I'm not getting any response from them. But yes, so I'm not giving up. I know that one day uh, my web helper will come. Through his work, James has met some influential people, but his Facebook populated by photos with some of Ghana's celebrities, including former Ghana international Augustine Ahemfo and actor Nana Ama McBrown. The latter, James told me, got him his first wheelchair. I used to go to Accra always. Um, um, I met uh, Augustine Ahemfo in Accra, Ayas Park, where they were training. And I've heard his name for many years, but I haven't met him one-on-one. -on -one. The time that I got the opportunity, I told him that I want to take a picture of him. And I told him what I'm capable of doing. And he was very happy and pleased with what I'm doing, irrespective of my condition. And then some of the um, Nanama McBrown and other people, even Nanama McBrown, um, about um, some seven years ago, he gave me a wheelchair. He saw what I'm doing, you know, he got a passion for what I'm doing and he bought a wheelchair for me because sometimes I find it very difficult to get a wheelchair, you know. And as I'm talking to you now, this wheelchair that I'm using, it is in the state of getting spoiled and I'm just thinking about it because when it gets spoiled, um, it takes me a very uh, quite long time before I can able to get a wheelchair. Sometimes I used to crawl from my house to the training ground before I can, I can get access to this place. It's very difficult, but... Um, I'm still in this uh, praying for, to God that uh, He should give me my helper. It is not uncommon to see disabled people on the street begging. But James says he could never bring himself to beg on the street. Uh, it's something that, uh, as for me, I feel ashamed of being in that state, you know, begging for money, being on the streets and begging for money. Uh, I'm not saying those on the streets are useless, no. Um, but as I said, if you are disabled or physically challenged person in this country or in Africa, you, you, you find yourself rejected or abandoned from the family. So only thing that you can able to survive is sometimes go to roadside and beg for money. Even some of them, they don't have a place to sleep. It's very pathetic. And if I see in that way, it pains me a lot. But I put my heart to God that irrespective of my, the challenges and difficult that I'm going through, I will never be in that state. But any, a little that I'll get, it will please me. I'll be content anything that I'll have. Right now, James has set his sights on acquiring professional coaching licenses to prepare himself for an opportunity to coach any of the Ghana national teams. This is what I'm praying for, and that's why I'm, I'm very desperate that I, I can get the opportunity as well in Europe to have more courses about coaching so that I can get more um, experience and knowledge and good certificates so that I can get opportunity in our, some of our national teams. I believe that, that one day I will handle one of, some of our um, national teams in Ghana here and I will do best. I will lead them to the promised land. Um, I know that uh, people are going to say a lot of things about me when the opportunity comes, but I will prove them wrong by the grace of God. As for the children he coaches, James wants people to come to his aid to help make the kids' dreams of becoming professional footballers a reality. We are, we are facing a lot of challenges in us. Um, we are going through a lot of difficulties and challenges. Sometimes we can come to training without ball, without babes and other things. And most of the players also don't have um, known the equipment that they can use to train. Like, um, it's very difficult, uh, it's very challengeable, but um, always I'm pleading to the public, I'm pleading to the government that they should come to my aid to come and support me because this is what I want to do. Uh, I, ha I don't have any job to do, I don't have any passion for any job. The only passion that I have is in football. So I want everybody to come to my aid to come and support me, to reach far. Nothing is given to man on earth. Struggle is built into the nature of life and conflict is possible. Those are words of the American philosopher Andrew Bernstein. They apply aptly to the situation of James. He chose a dream, traversing a field never before thought possible for people like him. But there's no stopping him now as he rolls our tactics on a wheelchair. Always I feel like to be a player, because when I see my colleagues, when I see most of the Ghanaian players who are making up, you know, who are you know, playing outside Ghana here and then outside Ghana, I wish I could also be in that state. But because of my goodness, I couldn't able to make it. 
But always, as I said, I don't want to look down upon myself, but rather I want to do something to help the children who also want to take football as a career. I want to discover more people. I want to discover more players so that tomorrow when I see them making it, it looks like as if I am the one who is I'm making it because I couldn't able to make it but I want to discover somebody to come and then replace me this is what I am the reason why I'm doing all these things